Welcome to the Harbor UMC. We're a new online United Methodist congregation, a safe place to shelter the storms of life, find rest in Jesus, and be sent back into our local communities. My name is Atticus Hicks, and I'm so glad you found us. Our goal here at the Harbor is to provide online connection for United Methodists throughout North Georgia. If you're feeling adrift and you need a place to be fed, be embraced, or just to be, the Harbor is for you. Before we get started, I encourage you to gather a few things so you can participate in worship. You'll find scripture for today, a list of needed items in our weekly manifest, which you can download now using the link on your screen. You can also connect with us in the chat or on social media. And if you want to be connected through email, we've got you. Just sign in through the Church Online platform. Most importantly, know that no matter who you are, where you're from, who you love, or what brings you here today, you are welcome at the harbor. Let's worship together. Good morning, church. Hope this song finds you well. I hope it is a reminder of God's faithfulness through the storms of life, through the seas of doubt. We know that God is good always. So let's sing this together now. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me in all my days. I've been held in your hands from the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. I will sing of the goodness. Yeah. 
Yes, you have. And all my life, you have been so, so good. With every breath that I make, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. I will Giving is an act of worship, and your generosity helps us to share the love of Christ with the world. To those of you who are continuing this journey with us during this season and would like to offer financial support, you can do so now using the link on your screen. Your support helps us to continue to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world and to make places for people like you. I invite you to pray with me now as we give thanks for these gifts. Gracious God, thank you for the opportunity to give of the gifts that we so richly receive from you. Bless these gifts so that we might help you in your mission to transform the world. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's prepare to hear the word of God, which today comes from the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verses 1 through 5. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hi, friends. My name is Calissa Dodderman. I am part of the core team at the Harbor and also one of the pastors at Dunwoody United Methodist Church outside of Atlanta, Georgia. Now, chances are good that if you have found yourself here at the Harbor, you've also heard a great deal in recent months about what the United Methodist Church does or doesn't believe. You may have come from a church that's struggling to figure out its core values and beliefs. Or maybe you're new to this whole Jesus thing altogether and you want some clear answers as to what it's all about. 
Either way, we at The Harbor want to take this opportunity to talk clearly, directly, and authentically about what we believe. You see, the thing about church is that what we believe matters a lot. See, our beliefs about God or our theology inform so much of what we do and how we view and interact with the world around us. But a lot of times, those core ideas take a while to surface. See, we can get invested in communities for a lot of different reasons, right? How they make us feel, whether we like the people, even because they have good coffee and donuts if you're lucky. And while the core beliefs of those communities are always on display somehow, it's not always in the most direct of ways. Our beliefs will come out in little ways instead, in the prayers that we pray or the songs that we sing, how we welcome new people and who we include. It can be confusing, even frustrating, to try to pick up on those cues or feel like you have to guess about what a community believes. So y'all, let's talk. Let's talk clearly and openly about what we believe. Let's get down and dirty and a little bit nerdy about theology. You ready? Great. Okay, so as I mentioned, there are lots of ways that churches state or demonstrate what they believe. Historically, Christians have used statements of basic beliefs called creeds as part of their worship and prayer life. Reciting the creeds out loud helped people to remember these important beliefs and also put them into concise theology bites, if you will. Creeds summarized theology so that others could learn it too. Now, in the earliest days of Christianity, think the second or third century after the birth of Jesus, councils of Christians from around the world met to discuss and mostly argue about what went into those creeds. And that's where we got statements of faith like the Nicene Creed or the Chalcedonian Definition, both of which are really important historically, but will probably never really come across your path as a normal walking around Christian. Now, if you have heard or spoken a creed recently, it's probably the Apostles' Creed, which is shorter, a little bit newer, and honestly, a lot easier to understand. So the Apostles' Creed is the statement that will guide us as we walk through what we believe as United Methodists. In fact, the title of this worship series is Credo, which is the first word of the Apostles' Creed in Latin. Now, the Apostles' Creed starts with these very basic words. I believe in God the Father, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. It's a pretty basic statement, right? But there's actually a lot in there. So let's dive in. Firstly, we believe in God. And that seems obvious, right? But it's not nothing, because we live in a world where fewer and fewer people identify as religious, and atheism and agnosticism are in the water, right? But we hold that there is a supreme being, a divine power, an ultimate reality, and we call those things God. Now, how we experience God, imagine God, and the things that we think are important about God will differ a little bit from person to person. But there are some things about God that are steady, and we hear those in the creed. So one key idea is that God is like a parent. The creed refers to God here as God the Father. Now, this is a way of talking about one aspect of God. United Methodists and other Christians understand God as a trinity, a union of three different divine persons or aspects. There's God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All of them are God, they just act in the world in different ways. Now we'll talk more about the other persons of the Trinity in upcoming weeks, but the important thing to note here is that we believe that God can and does show up in the world like a father, like a parent. Now let's face it, relationships with our parents can be complicated. So this metaphor isn't perfect and it won't speak to all of us in the same way. But for the sake of this argument, I invite you to join me in a thought experiment. Close your eyes and think about the best possible parent you can imagine. The kind that always listens, always has a band-aid at the ready, shows up for every soccer game, every school play. Now open your eyes. Do you still have that imaginary perfect parent in your mind? Well, God's like that. You see, when we talk about God as father or parent, we're saying that God embodies all of those awesome parent traits. God cares for us and guides us. 
God keeps an eye on us, makes sure we don't get too out of line, and genuinely wants what's best for us. Now, as with all parents, what God wants isn't always what we want. So naturally, there will be times that we don't understand God's will or God's ways. We'll act out or we'll push back or generally act like ungrateful punks, right? But God loves us unconditionally and is always there for us when we need it, like a parent. The Creed also reminds us that God is the Father Almighty, right? Almighty, all-powerful. In church language, sometimes we say omnipotent. Not only does this mean that God can do anything, it also means that nothing is more powerful than God. Thinking about the power of God can sometimes seem abstract, right? Because God's power isn't necessarily like ours. God isn't a linebacker or a power lifter or even a superhero. Rather, God is the force in the universe that is ultimately stronger than evil, stronger than hate, stronger than tragedy we might experience. When we say that God is almighty, we mean that in the end, God's love and God's purposes always win out, even when that means that they're operating in ways that we could never fathom. In all of this, God's parental nature, God's supreme might, that rolls up into this third lesson packed into what the Apostles' Creed says about God. God is a creator. So our scripture lesson for today is from Genesis 1, and it's one of those stories of how God created the universe. Now, fun fact, I say one of the stories because the Bible actually gives us three major creation narratives. The first is what we read today, the story of how God created heaven and earth. Let's remind ourselves of that passage. We read, In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning, the first day. Now, if you keep reading in Genesis 1, you'll hear the story of God's creation of the sky and the sea, the sun and the moon, plants and living creatures. And the second creation story of the Bible, in Genesis 2, we hear a slightly different version of these events, almost as if the author ignored the first story altogether. So in Genesis 2, we learn about God's creation of humanity, us. This is the story where we first hear about the Garden of Eden, of Adam and Eve. And then a third major creation story comes much later at the beginning of the book of John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. Does that sound familiar? Well, yeah, it's a creation story too, albeit a much more abstract and ethereal one. You see, across the span of the Bible, we get these three different takes on how and what God creates. And sometimes people can find these differences in these stories confusing and troubling, but I think the most important thing we're learning from these narratives is that God is always making, always building and birthing. In fact, that's one of the main ideas of scripture. God created and is creating even now. Creation takes a lot of different shapes. Yes, it's dogs and daffodils and dung beetles and even us. But every day, God is also creating moments of peace, opportunities for friendship the curiosity and compassion that enlivens our hearts. Friends, when we speak the words of the Apostles' Creed and say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, we are claiming our faith that God cares about creation unconditionally, has power to guide that creation, and is making things new every single day. And y'all, those are big ideas. Those are important ideas, because if we believe that God created and cares for us, it means we should care for others too. If we believe that God made us and looks out for us, it means we can shed our fear and shame and love ourselves like God does. If we believe that God is an all-powerful creator, then we can face difficulties and challenges, whether they're personal or systemic, knowing that God is big enough, mighty enough, and inventive enough to help us overcome them. 
Friends, over the next couple of weeks, we will dive deep into more of our United Methodist beliefs. And each time we do, I hope that you'll remember these first basics. God loves us like a parent. God can do anything. And God is, at God's heart, a creator. These are the ideas that help all of the other ones fall into place.